Thank you. Uh, thank you for everybody for coming out here. Uh, obviously, celebrating some great milestones here for uh, all of our families. Um, I say all of our families because we are all one team. One, we are one family here. So um, tonight uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of promotions. Um, I'm going to just uh, actually turn over the mic to the town supervisor and let him uh, say some words. All right. Welcome everybody. So congratulations to all of our officers tonight that are uh, being promoted. Uh, over the last few months, I think we've been the become an envy of many uh, departments across Monroe County and uh, talking with officers uh, in other areas. Uh, tons of positive stuff coming out of Irondequoit from our, from our IPD. So uh, congratulations to all you and all your families, and uh, we will get started. So we'll call the first uh, officer up. Andy. Andrew Whitaker, why don't you step on up here? You and your family. Everybody all up there? <laughs> Who's going to be swearing in, buddy? Who wants to hold a Bible? You know what you had to put on the Bible? Sorry. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. All right. I, Andrew Whitaker. I, Andrew Whitaker. Do solemnly swear that I will defend the Constitution of the United States. Uh, do solemnly swear I'll defend the Constitution of the United States. And the state of New York. And the state of New York. I will enforce all of the laws of the state. I will enforce all the laws of the state. Of New York and the town of Veronica of the state of New York and the town of Irondequoit. I will fulfill the duties. I will fulfill the duties. Of the rank of captain. Of the rank of captain. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I will serve. I will serve. Protect and guide. Protect and guide. The citizens of the town of Irondequoit. The citizens of the town of Irondequoit. I will obey all orders. I will obey all orders. Rules and regulations. Rules and regulations. Of the Rondequay Police Department. Of the Rondequay Police Department. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. We got a lot here. Um, Jason Murphy, come on up, sir. Do you have any family with you? Come on up. <laughs> Hello. All right. There you go. Left hand in the Bible. <laughs> All right. Let you have that one right there. Oh, no, I got it. I got it. I got you. I got you. All right. I, Jason Murphy. I, Jason Murphy. Do solemnly swear that I will defend. Do solemnly swear that I will defend. The Constitution of the United States and the State of New York. The Constitution of the United States and the State of New York. I will enforce all of the laws. I will enforce all of the laws. Of the State of New York and the Town of Irondequoit. Of the State of New York and the Town of Irondequoit. I will fulfill the duties of the rank of lieutenant. I will fulfill the duties of the rank of lieutenant. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I will serve, protect, and guide. I will serve, protect, and guide. The citizens of the town of Irondequoit. The citizens of the town of Irondequoit. I will obey all orders. I will obey all orders. Rules and regulations. Rules and regulations. Of the Irondequoit Police Department. Of the Irondequoit Police Department. Congratulations. Tommy Fitzak. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Here, listen, I don't need the mic, so I'll just let you talk into it, okay? Keep your hand up. No, no, I got you. Got you. 
I, Thomas Fitzak. I, Thomas Fitzak. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States and the State of New York. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States and the State of New York. I will enforce all of the laws. I will enforce all of the laws. Of the State of New York. Of the State of New York. And the Town of Aronicoit. And the Town of Aronicoit. I will fulfill the duties. I will fulfill the duties. Of the rank of sergeant. Of the rank of sergeant. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I will serve. I will serve. Protect and guide. Protect and guide. The citizens of the town of Aronicoit. The citizens of the town of Aronicoit. I will obey all orders. I will obey all orders. Rules and regulations. Rules and regulations. Of the Aronicoit Police Department. Of the Aronicoit Police Department. Congratulations. <laughs> Officer Kyle Regal, come on up, sir. Obviously, these are not promotions, but we're obviously happy to have you guys finally join the family and get through and make it official that you're going to be part of a town of Veronica. <laughs> Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will defend the Constitution. That I will defend the Constitution. Of the United States and the State of New York. Of the United States and the State of New York. I'll enforce all of the laws. I'll enforce all the laws. Of the State of New York. The state of New York. And the town of Rondequoit. And the town of Rondequoit. I will fulfill the duties. I will fulfill the duties. Of the rank of police officer. Of the rank of police officer. To the best of my ability. To the best of my abilities. I will serve. I will serve. Protect and guide. Protect and guide. The citizens of the town of Aronicoit. The citizens of the town of Aronicoit. I will obey all orders. I will obey all orders. Rules and regulations. Rules and regulations. Of the Aronicoit Police Department. Of the Aronicoit Police Department. Welcome aboard, man. And last one for tonight, Officer Anthony Phillips. We still have one more. We have another uh, lieutenant, but he's uh, on vacation down in the Caribbean, so he'll be gone for three weeks, so we'll get him next month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Repeat after me. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. I mess it up too, so don't worry about it. Here we go. I, Anthony Phillips. I, Anthony Phillips. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States. And the state of New York. And the state of New York. I will enforce all of the laws. I will enforce all of the laws. Of the state of New York. Of the state of New York. And the town of Rondequay. In the town of Rondequay. I will fulfill the duties. I will fulfill the duties. Of the rank of police officer. Of the rank of police officer. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I will serve. I will serve. Protect and guide. Protect and guide. The citizens of the town of Rondequay. The citizens of the town of Rondequay. I will obey all orders. I will obey all orders. Rules and regulations. Rules and regulations. Of the Rondequay Police Department. Of the Rondequay Police Department. Congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you very much for uh, um, spending your night actually coming down here and seeing some of our promotees. Um, as soon as that, uh, we guys can, uh, we're going to be having a little uh, uh, reception back over at our headquarters. Uh, you guys are going to step back there, and we're going to get on with business. Yeah, we got all a right. couple minutes if they want pictures. And stuff. Yeah, if you guys want to come up here and make some pictures and all that stuff, and come on up. Thank you very much. Regular town board meeting to order at 7 p.m. on July 18th, 2023. Please join me in the saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Supervisor Fitzpatrick. Here. Councilwoman Freeman. Present. Councilman Perticone. Here. Councilwoman Romeo. Here. Councilman Wayner. Here. Attorney for the town. Here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, just a couple comments. Uh, this Saturday, July 22nd, we are open for business here at the town hall from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. We have electric re electronic recycling from 8 a.m. to noon at the DPW. Uh, we have a blood drive on July 25th at the library from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, and later in August, just to give you guys uh, enough time frame, August 23rd, we have our annual Senior Ex Expo at 9 a.m. to noon at the Arundaquai Community Center. We also have a Back to School Bash at the Community Center on August 25th, which will also feature um, a, a food truck rodeo. So uh, mark your calendars for that. Uh, we have uh, two people signed up for public input, so we will call our first uh, member. You have three, mim three minutes. Uh, please announce your name and address when you get to the podium. So our first uh, speaker is Robert LaDuca. My name is Robert LaDuca. I live at 103 Ranchford Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14622 East Rondequoit. I'd like to thank the board for giving me the opportunity to show my concern. I've given out a lot of photographs for people, and they're all labeled. So if we can look at photograph number one very fastly, that is the culprit, that monster branch sticking out. That, oh, that branch is bigger than that, because I went out there. So number two, you can see the branch from the other side, and you can see that it shoots out too. Hello. Another thing, you can also, num number three, you can see from a distance that it w if it goes down, uh-uh, very bad. Number four, there's this thing on the tree that one time somebody said has to do with the strength of a limb. I don't know, but it is deteriorating. Number five, I took this right next to the bedroom window, and where I took it, the head of somebody sitting and that lane in that bed would be this far away. And as you can see, you can't see the one limb. That's because if it let loose, it would crash into that house and just destroy it. So what I'm asking is, um, which I can do, if they could send a, a somebody that knows trees real well, and if they came down and said, Bob, eh, that's okay, or eh, maybe take the limb down, or maybe I'll take the tree out, Whatever it is, I'll respect their opinion to the most. Thank you. So, sorry, Bob, can I just ask, have you, have you contacted the DPW? Yep, never got a call back or nothing. Okay. Just ignored right. me. Sounds good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, next up we have Glenna Chance. a chance 85 andrea lane um just uh, you know on my continued thing about the smart meters but i'd also like to say there has never been even one study proving biological safety for these meters not one ever okay um don alhart did a, a multi-part interview with the president ceo of rge about a month ago and um i submitted a question <clears throat> which i didn't think would be opposed and it wasn't but on this says uh, some stuff that i wrote back to him after watching that. I was actually a little surprised that Ms. Nilsson's segment on these historically dangerous meters was so brief. I guess it's best not to say too much that can incriminate you when you know that what you are saying flies in the face of scientific fact. Because I have written to Ms. Nilsson, RGE corporate attorney Rosenblum, and other key employees many times since last summer, citing scientific facts with references, they cannot claim ignorance of the irrefutable dangers of these meters. <clears throat> she said, it's a system that's in place nationwide. So, <laughs> how many people are being injured, disabled, and displaced because of that? We already have radiation that are coming from your cell phone, your computer, from whatever device you're watching this on right now that are probably higher than what the smart meter would have. So no definitive or quantitative assessment, just nebulous generalities based on unsubstantiated opinion, hers apparently. 
all within safe levels. Safe for whom? Again, a nebulous assessment. Um, again, there has never been even one safety study proving biological safety from these meters. Ms. Nielsen's smug statement of how radiation from these meters is probably lower than that of your cell phone or the device that uh, is presumptive and distasteful. It is also an inaccurate and, I surmise, purposeful conflation of diverse technologies and their intended and practical applications. I and many others do not have and never would have any of the aforementioned items. Neither would I have Alexa, Ring Camera, Bluetooth enabled, or any other such device, not only because of the RF hazard, but also because of the surveillance component, which has been proven. Uh, these meters are hackable and thus a privacy liability, and they cannot be turned off, as can these other devices. Uh, apparently, despite easy access to vast information on the dangers of RF radiation, RGE has not only opted not to inform itself, but has chosen to perpetuate inaccurate information for monetary gain. Um, telling the public to read the industry-funded and thus inherently biased safety citations on the RGE website would be laughable if it were not so tragically perverse. I believe the cigarette industry proved tobacco safety in the same way. It took a while to backfire, but it did, at the expense of many, sadly. Smart meters will be the next big tobacco in Cap Lejeune. Until that time, RGE customers deserve the truth. If not from RGE, then from fellow citizens with a conscience. So, you know, I just uh, keep saying the same thing. If anybody wants me to speak at social or church functions and give a professional presentation on the scientific facts of this, let me know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenna. Okay, that includes our signed up speakers for the public input. Is there anybody else that would like to speak at this time? Okay, public input is now closed. And, uh, no public hearings. If you're here for a public hearing, they will be, uh, you can sign up on those sheets that are still out right now. So that, yeah, public hearings at 735. All right. With that, we'll move on to the uh, financial report. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The 2023 financial results for the town as of June 30th. The town's total expenses of 21,845,000 represent 52% of budget and are slightly higher than the 50% of the year that has elapsed. Of the total expenses, 17,609,000 are actual expenses equating to 42% of budget, while encumbrances of 4,236,000 make up the remaining 10.1%. Encumbrances represent commitments for services, supplies, and commodities that will be needed during the year. The general fund expenses are on par to budget at 50.7%, or 13,527,000. The actual expenditures are 44% of budget, or 11,730,000. The remaining 6.7% is due to encumbrances of 1,797,000. Contain, <coughs> excuse me, contained within the general fund encumbrances are general townwide street lighting, attorney fees, the EMS contract, cemetery columbarium construction, and other contracted expenses throughout the town. Collectively, the expenses in the highway funds are 4,149,000 and are higher than the 50% of the year that has elapsed at 71.2%. Actual expenses within the highway funds are 36.5% of budget, or 2,127,000, and encumbrances of 2 million 23,000 account for the remaining 34.7%. Encumbrances within the highway funds include 525,000 for ARPA-funded equipment, 867,000 for paving materials and services and oil and stoning materials, 216,000 for fuel, and 76,000 for surface treatment. Expenditures in the library fund are higher than budget at 1455000 or 52.1%. Included in the expenses is the serial bond payments of 483000 for the library facility. Sewer fund expenses of 1743000 are at 39.7% of budget. Actual expenses equate to 36.3% of budget or 1594000 while well, encumbrances of 149,000 account for the remaining 3.4%. Expenses in the stormwater drainage are approximately 37.9% of budget, a total of 356,000. 
actual expenses are 277,000 or 29.5% and encumbrances account for the remaining 8.4%. Actual expenditures excluding encumbrances for the entire town as well as each of the town's three major funds are below the 50% of the year that has elapsed. Actual townwide expenses represent 42% of budget, while actual expenses for the general fund are 44%, the consolidated highway fund are 36.5%, and the sewer fund is 36.3%. The general fund has received revenue of $18,306,000 or 70.7% of budget. At the end of June, 100% of real estate tax of $12,007,000 has been collected. 97.7% of payment in lieu of tax revenue is in. An additional $25,000 is due in October. Two months of sales tax totaling $1,271,000 or 22.3% have been received to date. Other major revenue sources, such as franchise cable fees, mortgage tax, and AIM-related payments are due later in the year. 82.3% of recreation program fees have been received through June. The total town revenue and appropriated fund balance for the first half of the year equate to 31,012,000 or 75.5%. Real estate taxes across the funds are 18,260,000. At month end, the library has recorded revenue of $2,748,000 or 98.4%. 74.1% or $4,308,000 of revenue has been verified by the highway funds. The sewer fund has documented $4,238,000 or 97.2% of revenue. The stormwater drainage has received 99.4% of its budgeted revenue at $883,000. <coughs> Page three of this financial report presents the second quarter year to date, summary and comparison to the prior six years. Regarding expenditures by fund, which are included on the top third of the page, the percent of the total budget spent and encumbered is 52%, which is slightly higher than previous years. The middle third of the page contains the relevant sources of revenue for the general fund and the bottom third of the page are the year-to-date revenue comparisons of the other funds with the last line reflecting total collective revenue and fund balance for the town. The 2023 general fund revenue of 70.7% is slightly higher than prior years, as is the town-wide revenue of 75.5%. Fluctuations occur year-to-year -year due to timing of cash receipts. The town has received <coughs> Excuse me. The town has received our full allocation of American Rescue Funds totaling $22,455,000. The use of this funding is restricted for the response to and relief of COVID-19 and can be used to cover costs incurred through December 31st, 2024. To date, approximately $18 million has been allocated to projects. Roughly $6.5 million or 28.8% has been expended to date and an additional 3.6 million or 16% is encumbered for various projects, including the McAvoy turf and other various playground retrofits, columbarium construction, sewer and drainage improvements, and IT projects and equipment. This concludes the financial report for the month of June, 2023. Thank you, Madam Comptroller. Any questions or comments on the financial report? Okay, I'll take a motion to accept the financial report. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Okay, the financial report is accepted. Madam Clerk, we have some minutes. Approval of minutes, June 13, 2023, the workshop meeting. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. I have stayed, sorry. I was not Excuse pleasant. me, I, I forgot, I'm sorry. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments? Go ahead, Petrina. I abstain because I was not here. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were had a comment. So, okay. Anyone have any questions or comments on the minutes? <clears throat> okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay. These minutes have been adopted. Next minutes. June 20, 2023, the regular town board meeting. Okay. Motion to accept. Move. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, any questions or comments on the regular town board meeting minutes? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay.
Okay, this minutes have been accepted. Next set of minutes. June 30, 2023, this special town board meeting. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, anyone with questions or comments on the special town board meeting? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. I am abstaining. Okay, this resolution has been adopted, or these minutes have been adopted. Next item. Okay, items for board action. Item number four, authorizing temporary appointment of an acting senior labor foreman in the Department of Public Works. Okay, motion to adopt. Move. Can I get a second? Second. second. Okay, this is to, uh, in relation to our Commissioner McGee, uh, will be out for an extended time. And uh, she uh, gave the board a plan for her um, uh, absence and uh, we discussed last week in executive session and uh, we're probably in agreement with 90 to 95 percent of it we just wanted to um, name someone um, in charge and that was Tommy Elbert um, so we are going to be giving him a temporary increase in pay uh, with his new role and new uh, or temporary role and uh, um, expectations while uh, Commissioner McGee is out. So um, is there any questions or comments from the board? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Tommy, congratulations. We look forward to uh, your leadership. Yep. Okay, next item. Item number five, authorizing an agreement with Gregory Merrick former uh, fire marshal for assistance in the fire marshal's office. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, and, uh, <coughs> Mary, do you want to speak on this? Sure, uh, thank you. Um, so with the um, current vacancy of a fire marshal uh, in the fire marshal's office, we would like to bring in our former fire marshal, Greg Merrick, who is a wealth of knowledge to um, help organize and also train our deputy fire marshal. Okay, thank you. Anyone have any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. This resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number six, authorizing an agreement with the Catholic Family Center for non-medical home support services to the elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2024. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, we'll have um, Madam Comptroller. Come here. Thank you. This resolution would authorize an agreement with Catholic Family Services in the amount of $27,000 for the upcoming CDBG grant year. This was uh, adopted as part of our um, 2023 CDBG program. Um, the Catholic Family Services provides non-medical home support services to the elderly. Services include coordination of, of services, transportation for errands, and home chores such as yard work and minor unskilled repairs. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. This resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number seven, authorizing an agreement with the Housing Council at Pathstone for housing counseling services to low and moderate income residents as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2024. Okay, motion to adopt. Move. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, Madam Comptroller. Thank you. Um, this. Um, would authorize an agreement with Housing Council at Pathstone for foreclosure prevention and counseling services. Um, the contract amount would be for 26000 and this was also approved as part of our 2023 CDBG program. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. This resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number eight, authorizing an agreement with the Arundaquai Community Cupboard to provide healthy food choices to low-income residents as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2024. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. 
Okay, ma'am. Comptroller. Thank you. Um, again, this is part of our approved CDBG program for 2023. This would authorize an agreement with the Irondequoit Community Cover in the amount of $22,000 to continue to provide healthy meals to low and moderate income households um, in the town. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, obviously uh, Community Covered is a longstanding um, member of our community and uh, doing a wonderful job, Debbie Evans and her crew over there. So uh, kudos to them for all the work they do and uh, glad we can uh, offer this support to them. So uh, any, any any other comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All, op all opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number nine, authorizing an agreement with Lifespan of Greater Rochester for the Home Safe Home for Seniors program of support services to the elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2024. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Hey, Madam Comptroller. Thank you. Um, again, this is part of our adopted 2023 CDBG program. This would authorize an agreement with Lifespan of Rochester um, in the amount of $15,000 to aid um, to provide ho um, home falls, prevention assessments, and minor home modifications for Rondequite residents. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 10, authorizing an agreement with Lifespan of Greater Rochester for transportation services to the elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2024. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, Madam Comptroller. Thank you. Um, this is the final resolution and that is part of our CDBG upcoming program year. This resolution would authorize a contract with Lifespan of Greater Rochester in the amount of $32,148 for transportation services for the elderly um, through its travel partners. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 11, authorizing a donation for from special events to St. Kettery Teca Quitha Parish. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, Madam Comptroller. Thank you. This resolution will authorize a donation to St. Catteri Parish um, in the amount of $1,000 um, for the use of the building and parking lot for the July 4th celebration. This donation will be made from the Special Events Fund, which is funded through donations and sponsorships for the event. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, thank you to them for letting us use their parking lot. Obviously, it makes uh, things a lot easier for our residents and for those visiting for the 4th of July festival. So. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 12, authorizing the use of American Rescue Plan Act funding for the upgrading of town hall campus facilities. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. I have a second. Second. Okay, Madam Comptroller. Thank you. This resolution would increase the allocation um, for the Town Hall campus facility upgrades by $650,000 um, for a total of $1 million. This project includes restroom upgrades, um, a dog kennel, upgrades to the public safety buildings exercise facility, and this would be funded by ARPA. Okay, uh, I just want to clear one, one thing that we're, we're not upgrading the public safety um, Jim, that's the uh, union own and run. This is uh, uh, part of the broader garage, which the police will use for training, um, um, like wrestling, taekwondo type training in that area. Sorry, I don't have the correct terms for that training, but um, it's not the gym over at the uh, public safety building. Chief, do you want to? Uh, yeah, we're going to be turning it into a, a classroom uh, portion for. Uh, regular classroom training, and then the other room is going to be turned into a, a mini dojo so we can do our ground fighting and uh, 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 defensive tactics uh, training. Okay. Any, anyone else with comments or questions? 
Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 13, authorizing the use of American Rescue Plan Act funding for the upgrading of Town Hall Campus outdoor facilities. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. I have a second. Second. Okay, Madam Controller, last one. Thank you. Um, this resolution would authorize $700,000 from ARPA funding for um, outdoor campus upgrades, what is commonly referred to as the backyard project. Um, this would include sidewalks, parking, and landscaping. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Quick question. Um, yep. Diana, can you um, recite that number again, please? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? How much again? This would be an allocation of 700000 towards the project. Um, and this is going towards, correct, the backyard project, correct? Allocated to the backyard project. Okay. Correct. Have we received the half a million dollars from Councilwoman, um, excuse me, from Sen Senator, State Senator Sam Rubruk, and from Assemblywoman Sarah Clark? I believe the $500,000 grant has been awarded um, to be utilized for the farmer's market building. Um, so that has been awarded to the town. It is okay. not received as it has to be um, expended up front and reimbursed. Okay, but it has been allocated for that particular use, the farmer's market? Correct. All right, you know, sometimes I ask questions so that everyone can understand what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron, do you want to update us on that, those grants? I know we're struggling uh, with at least one of those right now, so. Yes, Mr. Supervisor, thank you. We, um, yes, we, we have received a notification on, on the award of both of those grants, but the one grant that was um, previously awarded for um, a cabin renovation at Camp Eastman was then reassigned to the backyard project. So we're just in a, you know, a paperwork and, and uh, communication back and forth over that, that uh, change of scope that seems to have been... Um, I'm not sure, confused at some point in the process. <laughs> yeah, the, those grants have been a little bit confusing, but we're working through them. And uh, John, do you want to update on the uh, progress of the outdoor, or the, excuse me, the uh, year-round farmer's market? Yeah, I mean, I know the bids come up. Uh, we just had uh, opened the bids uh, on Friday, Friday afternoon. Um, yeah, that that's, uh, we'll be using the whole, I thought, you know, as of right now, I thought the, the half a million dollar grant was for that uh, the outdoor farmers project, and I assume that that's what it was earmarked for. So we will use that for the uh, outdoor farmers market at the cold storage building. So that's what we thought it was going to be used for. Yeah, the budget came in, and uh, you know I know the resolutions. Uh, I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but it's ready to go as soon as uh, you know the insurance is coming and everything. Contractors are ready to get going on that project, and I know DPW had. Had some responsibilities cleaning the building out. I think they're got most of it all cleaned out. So uh, we're going to be ready to go as soon as uh, we get the contractors on board and uh, we're ready to go. Okay. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 14, approving the tentative agreement with CSEA Blue Collar Unit for a successor contract. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. We get a second. Second. Okay, uh, Jason, you want to speak on this? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This is a simple two-year um, contract with the Blue Collar Unit. All terms and conditions remain the same with the exception of a 3% wage increase effective July 7th and 3% uh, on 1 1 2024 if approved tonight. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments for Jason? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. This resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 15 authorizing an employee to attend the Peshra annual conference. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, Jason. Thank you again. Um, this would be the um, Pashra Annual Conference. You might have known them by IPMA HR in the past. Um, this is an approved um, conference in the HR budget. 
I'm just coming back to the board for approval of the travel. It's a three-day conference in San Diego. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments for Jason? Yes, Jason, can you tell us what those initials are? Public Sector HR Association. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. <clears throat> Is that a nay? I, yes, it's a nay. nay. Okay. It's quite expensive. Oh, that's okay. nice. Thank you. Uh, this uh, resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 16, <clears throat> adopting a resolution calling for a public hearing authorizing amendment to town code 79-4 regarding habitually barking dogs. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. I get a second. Second. Okay, Chief. Uh, yes, this is going to be a, a, a change in the town code to actually give some uh, quantitative uh, times as far as uh, we have uh, annoying barking dogs. Uh, right now it's kind of open-ended, it just says annoying, um, and that's kind of uh, subjective to what's annoying to one person and to another person. So uh, we're going to be uh, um, trying to make those changes so it's easier for our um, uh, residents to understand. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Yes, I have a, a question for um, Chief Peters. So if a resident, say a resident's dog is barking and they are not home, will these rules that are in um, section one um, regarding the times and the amount of time the dog is barking, will that still affect them? Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's part of being a responsible uh, pet owner and we'll have to... Uh, um, uh, obviously, it's uh, we're trying to um, uh, be reasonable here, uh, but we're also trying to be mindful of uh, you know being good neighbors also. Okay, and that also one more question yep. that also re um, applies to them barking inside and out, or only outside. Uh, no, I mean if, obviously if the if the barks are loud enough to be heard on the outside, I mean obviously we're going to be reasonable on you know what we uh, what we what we're dealing with there, but um, I mean, a uh, barking Chihuahua and a barking St. Bernard are going to be two different things. Thank you. Which one's worse, worse Chief? I have two Chihuahuas. You have so. two Chihuahuas? All right. <laughs> they're, they're worse. They're worse? All right. <laughs> all right. Anyone else with questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. I okay. think we should um, add a section to this that specifically talks about people who are not um, at home, so it can be very clear. Uh, two without a special variance. Yeah, you can have three with a variance. Yep. Okay. All right. We. This is not uh, the time for questions. I'm, I apologize. Um, so there's a public hearing uh, next week or next month, so we can uh, do it then. Um, so all those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Sorry, I've already held the vote once. Get distracted. So this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Well, so we are going to to take uh, one out of order here, and uh, before we open our public hearing, um, so Madam Clerk, would you mind reading? Um, the 7PH1 resolution first. Sorry. So we're going to do that before the public hearing. Got it. Okay. Um, the resolution you'd like read? Yes, please. Okay. <clears throat> This is uh, Resolution 7PH-1, re-referring the matter of a special use permit for 4348 Culver Road in the C Business District for additional comment. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, we'll ask Town Council to explain uh, what we're doing uh, here with going out of order a little bit. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, at the June regular town board meeting, the town board had referred um, this particular application for Blue Palm Grill 
to the planning board for its comment. We did receive those back. Um, we were hoping to get something more substantive and really draw on the expertise of the planning board. So this particular um, resolution will re-refer it with specific instructions as to what to consider and report back to the town board. Um, and not that I want to get ahead of myself, but I, I think um, it may be a good idea to keep the public hearing that we're having tonight on the matter open so that those additional comments can be shared with the public and they can have an opportunity to address them at the August meeting as well. Um, and just to clarify, um, the particular application is to increase the capacity for seating. Not, it's not a matter of shutting it down in any way. It's just to change from 30 seats to uh, more than 30 seats. So. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, this will realign the process to we're a little bit out of order if we were to vote on this tonight, correct? That is that is correct, okay. yes. Um, you know, provided you want substantive comments from the planning board, which would be great given their expertise. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Uh, okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. It is... Yeah, can okay get a roll call so okay so we'll start to the right uh peter aye okay aye for me aye aye okay patrina aye okay thank you so this resolution has been adopted we will now open the um, public hearing uh madam clerk could you please call the first public hearing Public hearing 7PH 2023-1 on the matter of granting a special use permit for 4348 Culver Road in the C Business District and referring same to the Planning Board for comment. Okay, motion to open the public hearing. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this hearing is now open. And uh, for this first hearing... Uh, we do not, or sorry. Okay, we have one person signed up, so we have, uh, please state your name and address when you come up. Ed Stevens. Oh, I'm Sal. Not Ed. Yeah. Really? Well, well, we can, yeah, we can out the applicant. Sorry, Steve, or um, I didn't see us sneak up there, Sal. So oh, that's go right. ahead. I can you, let it, I no, can you can go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, my name is Sal Lee Chardello. I'm the attorney for the applicant for the Blue Palm Grill. And uh, this request relates to the special use permit, uh, which as the town attorney stated, uh, wouldn't change uh, the use there. It's just whether or not they can add additional chairs uh, for the patrons there. Uh, we believe this is really a minimal request. Uh, whether this is granted or not, the same amount of people are still gonna come out to the Blue Palm Allowing extra chairs just allows them to seat the patrons faster, makes it so patrons aren't parked as long, they're not waiting outside for a table, creating other uh, negative impacts that comes with that. They're able to turn them, the patrons over faster, get them in, get them out, and uh, it will not have any effect on uh, the, the operation there. If anything, it will uh, reduce any negative impacts. Like I said, it's, we want to get people in and out. We don't want people parked for a long time hanging around. Um, so I, in the letter of intent, you know, I, I outlined um, you know, the special use permit factors, but I'm going to just walk through them here with the board. Um, I'm I, just at risk of being too redundant. I'm, I'm going to go line by line here. A lot of these don't really relate to this request because they uh, contemplate new construction. So like providing adequate and safe site access. This is a pre-existing, pre-approved pre uh, commercial plaza with adequate access, adequate site utility service, water, sewer, uh, that's all there. Um, you know, that the development will be compatible with existing natural features. Again, this is a pre-existing, pre-approved uh, commercial development. Uh, Year-round uh, fire protection services, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, depth of bay water doesn't apply. Uh, going next, compatible with existing land use and zoning pattern in the immediate area. Uh, this is probably one that would be under review by this board. Uh, again, this is permitted in the C Business District. There are uh, residential neighborhood to the east, um, but these residences were all purchased with knowledge that they're, they're next to a commercial district. 
Uh, it's been all businesses along Culver Road up to the lake. I think before all of us here were born, uh, it's been like that. There have been restaurants in that location. Uh, a few hundred feet, I, I measured it on Google, I think it came out at like 300 feet away to the south, is M's Bar and Grill with identical hours of operation, virtually identical amount of people in there. Uh, it, it's, this is a use that the residents is in the neighborhood have been living with for a long time. This isn't like we're coming in here and this is going to be the only establishment that's open late serving drinks. And, and serving food. Uh, there's other uses in the, in the area that already do that. Uh, and to the point of one of the other criteria here, there aren't too many where we're at risk of oversaturating the area or creating an undesirable or significant concentration of businesses like that. In the immediate area, there's one other business, which is M's. Uh, you also have the bowling alley nearby uh, with a bar as well. I'm not sure about their hours of operation, but um, you know, again, that's another business that uh, is engaged in similar activities. Um, back to the site, uh, the special use permit factors, uh, we were just at number six. Again, so this is compatible. There are other similar uses in the neighborhood, uh, but not too many that would, it would create an undesirable concentration. Um, it, that the development would comply with the applicable site design criteria. Again, we're not building anything here. Uh, the only thing that changes is inside the four corners of the premises at the Blue Palm leases, um, and nothing else is changing as far as site design. There's no earthwork. We're not moving anything. Um, public access to shore zone is not applicable here. Uh, so that's all the factors listed under subsection A in 235-92. Moving on to subsection B, uh, adversely affect the uh, character of the surrounding neighborhood. It's very similar to the other point I touched on. Uh, again, this is a, a use that's permitted in the C Business District. Uh, it's similar to many other uses that are nearby. And uh, it, we're not proposing anything that would go above and beyond what other businesses are already doing. Um, you know, it would be more profitable for the Blue Palm to stay open till 2 a.m., but they purposely limited themselves to blend in with the community around them to match the business hours of M's that's a few hundred feet away. Um, you know, they're making efforts to, to mitigate against any potential adverse impacts. Um, and number two, I, I touched on this, to cause an inappropriate or undesirable number, number of similar uses to be concentrated in the immediate area. Uh, there's one other similar use in the immediate area. Um, I'm fairly confident that two is not an undesirable or significant um, or inappropriate uh, number of uses. Um, and as it relates to being a nuisance to neighboring land uses in terms of obno ob obnoxious or objectionable noise, it's probably the only thing here that would be uh, potentially implicated. Um, the Blue Palm Grill, again, same hours of operation as the other bar nearby. So if, if they are producing noise, it's at the same time that other businesses are, are conducting commercial activity. And uh, they've taken great lengths to minimize any noise impacts. They play their music at a very reasonable volume. It's not uh, able to be heard outside the building. And um, they also have a uh, parking attendant on site during peak hours that they staff to, to look out for you know, customers blaring their radio. Again, it's stuff that's really outside of a business's control, but they're still taking steps to try to control it to the, the greatest extent feasible. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think the opening weekend when they opened up, they had a radio station come down to advertise. They had a DJ set up. That was St. Paddy's Day weekend. And uh, I believe there were a few noise complaints that weekend, and there haven't been any since. Um, you know, I think they kind of got a little ahead of themselves doing a grand opening and uh, maybe got off on the wrong foot with some of the neighbors. But uh, as evidenced by a few of the letters we've received in support of Blue Palm of neighbors that live on Marinol, very close nearby, uh, there is not an unreasonable amount of noise coming from this establishment. It's not causing negative impacts. Um, I, before I submit those into the record, I'll just keep going through this list here. Uh, create undue hazards or dangers to the general public. Um, I really don't think this applies here. The only thing that could apply is the traffic congestion or parking. Um, now, to that point, parking is an issue for the neighbors on Mary Knoll. 
Uh, I've, I've spoken with them personally. They've raised these issues at the planning board public hearing. And uh, a lot of those neighbors don't have driveways, so they rely on public right-of-way parking. And, you know, some of them came up to me. I think they're a little misguided. They're like, well, that is my town highway right away. And I'm like, well, it's not. It's the town's for the public. It's not yours. You can't exclude people from parking there. Nevertheless, the Blue Palm, in their efforts to minimize any impacts to the neighbors, have agreed, and they're happy to have this be a condition, that they will not direct any of their uh, patrons to park on Mary Knoll. Uh, during their peak hours, when they have a parking attendant on site, they will ensure that no patrons park on Mary Knoll. There is sufficient parking in the lot east of the building. Uh, on the site plan is delineated uh, 19 spots that are on site. There's an additional eight marked spots on the north edge of the property along Mary Knoll. And then there's a, an additional unmarked spot, a uh, gravel lot with space for six to eight parking spots as well. So just in the parking that they have on site and immediately contiguous to the property, there are, uh, sorry, I'm really bad at math, but more than 23, which is what's required. Uh, in addition to that, um, the, the building owner who owns the premises where the Blue Palm is, he also owns the plaza to the north at the corner of Mary Knoll and, and Culver. And uh, he indicated that uh, the businesses there are closed during the Blue Palm's peak hours and that the Blue Palm is free to use those spots as well that will not impact any of the residents along Mary Knoll. In addition to that, uh, we just, I just got news today that the uh, owners of Parkside Diner to the west along Culver Road, they came in and they gave Blue Palm written permission to use their parking lot for overflow parking. I believe they close at two or three. Uh, Blue Palm doesn't really get busy until dinner time. I think probably six to nine is their peak hours. So they are able to use uh, the parking spots in Parkside Diner as well. So uh, there will be zero patrons of the Blue Palm that intentionally park along Mary Knoll. Um, you know, we're gonna take efforts as well. Uh, like I said, they staff a parking attendant during their busy hours to ensure that there are no impacts to the neighbors. So I, I believe that that criteria has been properly mitigated against uh, when this board considers that factor. Um, and then the uh, development will be incompatible with the type, extent, and direction of building development for the site and surrounding area. Uh, again, there's no new development here. Uh, that, that factor doesn't apply. That, uh, that will be incompatible with the local waterfront revitalization program. That doesn't apply. Uh, destroy or adversely impact significant historic and cult cultural resources. That doesn't apply. And uh, require an unnecessary or destructive amount of dredging, filling, or other disturbances of the waters of Irondequoit Bay or Lake Ontario. Again, doesn't apply. So really the only criteria for the special use permit factors that are relevant here are parking and noise. Blue Palm is already, uh, I'm gonna just reiterate it again, consistent with the hours of operation of other local, local uh, businesses in the area, so they won't create any, uh, any noise impacts. And also they've taken steps to uh, ensure that there are no negative impacts to parking for the residents nearby. Um, so to that the extent to that, I have uh, this, it's very, uh, it's like a one sentence letter, but to the town board, we give the Blue Palm permission to use our parking lot for overflow parking, signed Jim and Greg Pappas. They have their phone number listed, Parkside Diner owners. Um, I'd imagine if the town wants to uh, rely on this to allow Blue Palm to count that parking for part of their parking requirement. They might want something a little more formal, um, but I would still like to submit this to the record um, just so I don't know who I should hand this to. to okay, <laughs> thank you. Clerk. town also received uh, an email from a neighbor that lives three houses down. Um, I'll, I'll just read, it's pretty short. I live three doors down from this restaurant and disagree with the complaints about noise. I have never heard anything from that establishment. I dined there and the food was good, service was polite and prompt, 
and I witnessed several middle-aged families there eating and enjoying the place. It was much more the restaurant than the wild bar these uptight neighbors have tried to make it out to be. There is ample parking out back for approximately 20 vehicles, plus the side by the entrance may fit another eight to 10 cars. In addition, as all the complaining neighbors seem to park on the street, there is that also. Seems to be a bunch of not in my backyard people in an uproar because people of color have opened up in their little white bread neighborhood. Please don't do the injustice of penalizing these people who have opened up a decent establishment in a neighborhood that is in dire need of diversity. Um, that's from uh, Mr. Masafero, who lives uh, on Culver Road, uh, close by. Um, we also have a letter. I, I'm not going to read this one, too. I just don't want to be redundant here. I think you guys get the point. Uh, from the neighbor that lives directly east to the Blue Palm. So the property that is the most affected by what goes on here. I mean, she borders their parking lot. And uh, she is 100% in favor of all three applications that the Blue Palm has submitted to the town. As some of you may be aware, we're in front of the planning board for the change of use. We're in front of this board for the special use permit. And we also uh, maybe preemptively submitted a, an application to the zoning board for a variance for the parking requirements. Um, in light of this agreement between Parkside Diner and Blue Palm, allowing them to park there, uh, that variance request may be unnecessary. Uh, we'll work with town staff to, uh, to work through that. Um, but you know, that is, is still on track for that board. Um, she's in favor of all three of those requests and has not been impacted by noise. And again, she lives the closest to the Blue Palm and is not impacted by noise there. Um, Another point I'd like to bring up is we're discussing the change of the character of the neighborhood by increasing the intensity. So Mazzaroni's was permitted there as an establishment, a restaurant with seating for 30 patrons or less. Uh, if any of you guys went to Mazzaroni's, you may have noticed that they had a lot more than 30 seats in there. Uh, I have some pictures here I'd like to submit in the record. Uh, when Mr. Ramos was scoping out the place to figure out if he wanted to open his restaurant there, uh, he took some pictures of the inside. And um, they're not, they don't capture all of the seats because I don't think he was trying to. So behind the photographer, there were additional uh, four or five, four top tables. Uh, but in these pictures alone, including the patio, there's nearly 60 seats that were inside Mazzaroni's. So uh, they may not have been permitted to do that, but they were operating with seating for nearly 60 people. and the sky didn't fall. Everything went smoothly. There's enough parking. It, it wasn't uh, automatically incompatible with the neighborhood just because they offered more seats for their patrons. Um, so I'll submit this, but uh, in conclusion, again, allowing this special use permit only permits Blue Palm to have more seats for their patrons. Allowing more seats means the customers are turned over faster they're, they're able to just walk in and eat and leave within an hour. They're not waiting for a table, parking for longer amounts of time, standing outside waiting for a table, creating any other potential negative impacts. So uh, allowing this would minimize uh, any potential negative adverse impacts. Um, so I'm going to hand this over to the town clerk, and if you guys have any questions for me, I'm happy to try to answer them. Anyone uh, have any questions for Sal before he leaves? Could you just state for the record what the hours of operation are? Yeah. Um, so I, I had it in the letter. What's in the letter is correct, except for Sunday. I, I didn't have anything listed. So that's 11 to 10 Monday through Thursday, 11 to 1 Friday and Saturday, 11 to 6 on Sunday. Um, and in the winter time, there, there would almost certainly be less. Um, that's just for summer, like, peak business. Um, you know, as you know, in that area, it is seasonal, the demand, so. Can, can you just explain how we are here now? So, obviously, you open a business in March under certain rules. Right. Is it cost so many customers? Is it demand? Is it, what's the change, what's the need for a change so well, quickly? I think the intention was to eventually get to this place. Okay. Um, when they first opened, it was like tail end of COVID. And they, I think they wanted to kind of test the market first. So they were mostly doing takeout orders, a lot of like Grubhub orders. Um, they're also doing cooking there for uh, food trucks. So at the time, they didn't 
need to have that much seating. They also didn't have their uh, liquor license yet, so there was no bar there. So uh, when they took over the spot, all the chairs and booths that were in Mazzaroni's are still there today. They didn't add any chairs except for the 12 seats of the, their, the stools along the bar. Um, so when they opened, they pulled the permit to do the renovations and they were operating just uh, as the same use that was there before, which is restaurant for seating with 30 or less. Um, I, town staff informed them that they would have to get a separate approval to do more seats. So after they got their CFC for uh, under the original use, I don't know exactly the timeline because I wasn't involved. If I was, you know, this would have went a little bit smoother. But um, they ob obtained their liquor license from New York State Liquor Authority. And then the Irondequoit Fire Marshal came in and handed the Blue Palm a certificate that says, Town of Irondequoit, maximum occupancy, 75 people. And so they took that as, a, oh, great. We got our separate approval from the town that says we can have 75 people in here. So we got seven employees, 68 seats, 75. They now are aware that that's not the case, that that certificate from the fire marshal is just a fire code safety thing. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why they went through the expense of hiring an attorney and are submitting three applications to uh, rectify that. Okay. Uh, it was a misunderstanding, and they are currently operating. I don't know if you guys saw on the news. You know, you could see in there there's less than – well, I think there's exactly 30 seats uh, okay. right now in there. Okay. And their, their health permit is for how many seats? Um, Zero to 50? I don't know that off the top of my head, but I can get that information to you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Hopefully the planning board uh, – does what they're supposed to and gets this back to us and we'll uh, take care of this in the uh, August meeting. So, Mr. Supervisor, if I yeah. may, just ask yeah. a quick question. Um, do you have a copy of the letter from the neighbor who owns the property directly east of the Blue Palm oh. Grill? Yes, it's right here. Would you be able to hand that up to Absolutely. the clerk as well for the record? Thank you. Thank you, Sal. So the name that's in this uh, public hearing is actually in the wrong section, so we do not have anybody signed up. But if there's someone that would like to speak, uh, just state your name and Hi, address. Joe DePasquale, and I live at 40 Mary Noah Park. The attorney answered a lot of my questions tonight, but there's still some. To say it doesn't impact Mary Noah Park is not true. We're right there. How are you going to tell people they're not going to drive and park? You aren't. You can't. Uh, the parking spaces that he talks about that are on Mary Knoll on the north side of the building, they're in the town of Irondequoit's right away. Who's responsible for those sites? Who's going to keep them maintained? Now that right away goes the entire length of Mary Knoll Park. Mary Knoll Park does not empty into Seabreeze Parkway. It comes around a blind curve and meets with Topper and Seaview, which there's no traffic control, like stop sign, yield signs, and not even a sign saying that there's a blind curve there. Now, at one time they talked about there's a parking lot along the south lanes of Seabreeze uh, Parkway. There's a small parking lot there. The only access to that parking lot is off Seabreeze Parkway or Topper Avenue. And I'm not even sure that road that goes from Topper is town property because that's the release valve for Seabreeze Amusement Park, that back parking lot, and that big RG&E substation that's back there. Something that needs to be looked at. Who's responsible for that maintenance of those roadways? Same way with that, that right of way that goes all the way down Marino Park. I guess it was a trolley something 100 million years ago. Who's going to maintain it? Right now, the homeowners do, but if you have cars parking there, I'm not going to go out and mow it anymore. And not only that, uh, people on Durand count, uh, I think there's three, maybe four houses on Durand that rely on Mary Knoll for their parking. Because on Durand, there is no parking, as there is no parking along Culver Road. You know, you can't park along Culver Road. Parking is going to be an issue, no matter how many spaces. I'm glad Mr. Pappas 
gave them permission. They needed it. I don't want to see this restaurant fail. That has nothing to do with it. But it's for the peace of mind that I'm not being woke up at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning by booming music, car door slamming, rowdy. Oh, here's another. Maseronis didn't have a full bar license. These people do. Two different, two different things. You know, people aren't going to go in there at 11 o'clock to eat a dinner. They're going in there to get a drink on. And then 1 o'clock, is the place going to be automatically emptied out? That's not how bars work. You know, people linger, finish their drinks. So the hours, you know, it just, it's not a good fit for the neighborhood. We're, we're condensed down there. I mean, we're packed in tight. You have allowed 300 apartments to go in there. You have allowed the 7-Eleven used to be a corner gas station that closed at night. Now it's 24-7. Uh, he mentioned only one other bar. You got Shamrock Jacks right at the end of Seaview. That's our neighbor. How much more can we take? I have nothing against the restaurant. Restaurant is fine. I know people who have ate there. They say the food is great. Great atmosphere. It looks great from the street. No doubt about it. It's a nice addition. The bar worries me. That's okay. all I have to say. Okay. But I thank really you. do want to thank him for answering a lot of my questions. Okay. Oh, one more. Uh, at the review meeting, they said they only had one garbage pickup a week. If you're serving 80 dinners, <laughs> you need more than one week of garbage pickup from food waste. We already have a rodent problem up there, and I'm sure the town boards have been made aware of that. Uh, that's not going to help at all. More okay. garbage pickup. Okay, thank you for your time. No, thank you very much, Mark. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there anybody else that would wish to speak? All right, well, we will wait for a uh, review from the planning board and uh, hopefully get um, some of the questions that residents and others have uh, answered. And uh, seems like some of them were tonight, so hopefully that goes well. Um, we will leave this uh, public hearing open for next meeting um, to give anybody um, an opportunity to speak after planning board uh, does proper review. Uh, so we'll move on to next uh, public hearing at this time. Public hearing 7, PH 2023-2, on the matter of amending Town Code Chapter 93 regarding bow hunt regulations. Okay, motion to open the hearing. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. <clears throat> second excuse me, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Okay, this hearing is now open. Uh, we do have one member signed up. Uh, that is Ed Stevens. Ed, if you just state your name and address when you come up. Hello, folks. Ed Stevens, and I live at 491 Hoffman Road, Rochester, 14622. And uh, what I have to say is pretty short and simple. I mean... I, I saw that there was three different amendments or changes to this program. The one that I have a problem with is demanding that all the bow hunters remove their tree stands every year. I mean, there, there's tree stands have been out there for 20 years. They've never been a problem for anybody. You know, w one guy called me, uh, you probably know Steve Grevy, some of you might. And, uh, you know, he says he likes to use his tree stand for uh, photographing uh, songbirds and pileated woodpeckers and stuff up in the up in the trees the woods whatever but it, uh, it it seems like a huge infringement on the rights of the bow hunters I mean they were given permission to hunt those areas the police come around and they uh, inspect the exact location of those tree stands and now all of a sudden to demand that they have to take them down every year I, it just seems like a real infringement on uh, on the rights of the bow hunters, and uh, f to what end? You know, I mean, you know, there's I drive around around the cut all the time. There's stuff I don't want to look at. You know, you get you know overgrown grass and weeds in one guy's yard, trash in another, abandoned vehicles in the next, and uh, yet with these bows. I mean, I can't think of any reason why somebody would want these down except the way they look. 
I don't know what else a reason would be, but uh, it, it just seems pretty ridiculous to me and an unneeded uh, effort by, you know, everybody involved, you know, for you folks to put this into the town code and the bow hunters have to comply and the police have to regulate. Um, it, like I say, some of these stands have been there for 20, 25 years and never caused anybody any problem. So I'm not sure, you know, because of a select few, it's all of a sudden seen as an issue or a problem. And uh, I just want to go on record saying I don't agree with it. I think it's ridiculous. And that's all I got. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we do not have anybody else signed up. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Okay, come on up, state your name and address. Adam Stein, 111 Spring Valley Drive. Um, in a lot of the cases, I don't know for a fact, but the tree stands might be next to someone's house on their property. But in my neighborhood, the tree stand is in the middle of woods. There is no good marking saying where the property ends or begins. And so it's a safety hazard. In fact, I've had this problem before. In my neighborhood, I had a trampoline my son didn't use anymore. And I actually had to throw out the legs because kids would come from another development through the woods and start bouncing on it. If something happened, I was going to be liable for it. So I had to make sure they couldn't do anything with it. If anybody comes through and says this tree stand just standing there, there's no house. It's on a tiny little spot of land. There's nothing else around it to indicate it belongs to anybody. Someone goes up, it falls off. Who's going to be to blame? Who's going to be liable? It certainly won't be my neighborhood. It'll be the property owner. Okay. And, you know, so that's, that's a potential risk that is being taken. Okay, thank, thank you for your time. Is there anybody else that would like to speak on this issue? Okay, open it up for discussion with the board. Any board members have any questions or comments? Okay. You know, I, can I make, you know when it comes to Mike, obviously, uh, when it comes to the tree stands and that that type of thing. I mean, if a tree stand's been up 25 years, I, I I'm just trying to figure out are these are these the tree stands or self climbers? Are they ladder tree stands? Nobody's up there hammering and nailing and screwing into the tree or anything like that, correct? I mean, that's that, that's what I'm trying to get to. So these are all ladder stands with a platform, right? Most of them are. Yeah. So that that that's a question that was brought up. If they're on a pri if if the tree stands are on a private property, right? I mean, do they need permission? Have they ever needed permission to leave those stands up year round on a private property? You never talked to the landowner and asked them or anything like that. It's just been. Oh, yeah. I mean, the landowners know they're there. They know they're there, so they're. I'm assuming they're okay with it, oh, yeah. right? I'm assuming they're okay with it. Okay, that's just, that's just a question I had. Okay. I mean, so these are, I mean, we're talking about not the kind that these are, you were, they're wood, they're built on the tree. No, no. They're strapped to the tree. They're strapped just to the a, tree. There's a platform and a ladder to them. Probably right. have a, a harness or you use your harness and everything with them, right? Yeah, so I, that's right, I mean, yeah. One thing I think, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, Mary, I mean, you could build a tree house in Aranaquay with, without a building permit. Correct. I mean, you know, if these structures start to become something more permanent, is there any way of really not allowing them? I mean, when is a treehouse not a hunting stand, or when is a hunting yeah, so, stand not a treehouse? So the code was considered in this, and that was a that question. I, I think the, the uh, idea behind taking these deer stands down and and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, is just to, you know, not draw undue attention to this property and try to re relieve any other way to complain about the bow hunt program, to be quite honest. I mean, so, you know, a, a courtesy, I guess, to the neighbors. I mean, um, so I, my, I'm not a hunter. My son is, and we got a tree stand in my garage. Um, you know, I guess I've never thought of, throwing it up in my front yard and 
Well, it would be different, I guess, if you could hunt on your own land and you had your own tree stand yeah. on your own land. Yeah, so I think it was it, it was more of a, a right. courtesy and a, just a, more of a way to, you know, not draw um, year-round attention to these to these properties right. and make sure, you know, that they were, uh, you know, courtes courtesy to the neighbor. So by no means was it meant to be a, you know, a hampering to the to the hunters or a, or a you know, I know my son goes out and has to hang his tree stand right. as he hunts, right? So um, so I think that was the the hope behind that measure of that bow hunt program. So um, that's all I have on that, I guess. Yep. Can I just add to that? Yes. So there were a number of recommendations, and we're trying to practice the art of compromise. And so... On the thread of what you're trying to say, Mr. Supervisors, we're trying really hard to work together. It's a great program. It's a benefit to the whole community. We understand there's very different levels of feelings about the program. Um, having been an avid hunter, yeah, it'd be a big pain in the neck if I had to go take my tree stand down. I get that, but I grew up in Clarkson, so it was a little bit different. So I'm just going to go back to it's really about the art of compromise, and it's about trying to bring everybody to the table, hear everybody's opinions, and then come up with the best solution that sort of blankets everybody. But thank you all for coming and chatting. Yeah, so, all right, so we, we're not going to, well, if you'd like to speak and come up and say your name and address, you're more than welcome to. We're not going to shout from the stands. Hi, thanks for hearing from me. I'm Lisa DeLuise. I live at 63 Spring Valley. So the, the issues that I see are, first and foremost, a tree stand. Excuse me, Lisa, can you bring that mic a little yeah. closer? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, so we have town codes. Uh, I forget what it's called. You can file a complaint online, right, if somebody's storing a vehicle that shouldn't be on a property that's an eyesore in the neighborhood. I used to live in Pennsylvania where if your grass grew too long, you'd get an ordinance, right? So if, if, if people are complaining about a tree stand, then there should be a rule a town, in the town code that says the hunter needs to respond to the com complainant, right? It's a safety issue, first of all, right? This person who, the tree, the tree stand that I'm concerned about, the owner of that property doesn't live on that property, right? So he, the owner of that property and the owner of that tree stand cannot monitor who might be using it or misusing it. So, so there should be, if you don't want to just, you know, I don't want to force any hunter to take down a tree stand that's, you know, so um, backed up in the woods that nobody would ever see it because it's like 10 acres in, right? Unless the town feels that that would be a safety issue, it still is because anybody can walk through woods. But, you know, safety number one, eye sword number two. If, if you don't put something in the code, the owner of that tree stand will never acknowledge. We, bet, we asked him to take down property signs that he demarcated on uh, Huntington Hills land, right? To our president of the association asked him to properly mark your land, take away your signs on our land, and it never happened. So that's the person that we're dealing with. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So I, I do have a question, I guess, for legal at this point. Is there a way, well, first of all, if, if any changes are made to this uh, resolution does a new public hearing have to occur or it depends on the scope of the changes so if it's not material if it's a minor change then no if it is a material change or significant in the substance of the change we should have another public we, ha we have to publish it again and then have another public hearing and then you so, can vote on it so I guess my I but we like, have time, Mr. Supervisor. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I don't think I'm going to – we'll table the resolution, yeah. you know, which, which we had planned to anyway because we 
do want to take in consideration of everybody, and we have, have, and and you know the group that's leading uh, this, you know, has said that they were promised that the bow hunt program would be reviewed every year, and for the last five years it hasn't. So, you know, I consider uh, what we're doing a big step and a and an answer to them. Um, you know, we've listened to the hunters, and you know, I, I think the the one the deer stand has been you know, discuss. So I, I guess, you know, one change that I would possibly consider is if the, if there's a complaint uh, about particular deer stands from, you know, nearby residents, then possibly that's when it goes into effect so that someone that isn't, you know, an area where it doesn't need to be removed. But if it is uh, considered a detriment to the neighborhood by the neighbors themselves, not somebody driving by or visiting the neighborhood, then, you know, maybe that's when it kicks in. So I think. I mean, I certainly see like an instance where a properly installed and maintained deer tree stand on a person's private property that they own and maintain, you know, should be something that could be considered. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, you want to, you want to be good neighbors, right? Right. You can, you know, and if, if there's not a house on a, on a lot and, you know, the people don't live on the lot that they're hunting on. Right. Um, and the neighbors would like to see it not there, then, you know, that's just common, you know, courtesy, I right. think. No, you I know, agree. If it's, if it's a, if it's a, you, you own the property, you live at the property, you see the tree stand yourself every day. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ways to look at it, I guess. But, um, well, and, you know, when you talk about maintaining it, I'm certainly sure the hunters maintain them because they're not going to go up in a tree stand. It's unsafe. It's a long way down. I would imagine. I would imagine most of them are 30 feet plus up in the air. Um, you know, I can't imagine a tree stand 30 feet plus up in the air being a, an eyesore. But if it's sometimes if it's a safety issue, then maybe they get take the ladder. You know, I don't know if that, if that's one of the cases. That it's but I I agree with you, Pete. If if I own the property. You know, when I live there, I should um, be considered. Because I, I know, I'm certainly sure before every season, they make sure those stands are properly maintained and they're sufficient to hold, um, you know, a hunter, and they're not unsafe. Because nobody wants to fall out of a tree stand, believe me. So, right. okay. But, so, yeah, let's, let's take yeah, I think so it's I, a good idea. Let's yeah, so I think we'll, we'll, you know, we'll close out the public hearing. I think we've, we've heard from... Um, you know enough people on this um but let's give ourselves time to consider everybody's uh feedback and see and uh, make sure that we're uh comfortable with the resolution so at that time we'll yeah. we'll at this time we'll table that resolution correct yeah. will we or will we close this out and get some new language and then reopen it if 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 it if that language entitles us or okay. makes us do that so if it's okay. if it's minor enough that we don't have to then we won't Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. Are you going to have another meeting on this? No, that's what we're saying. We're closing the public hearing right now. So, But we're not voting on the resolution right now that's in front of us so that we can have time to consider uh, any changes that uh, need to be done or not to be done. So instead of voting on it, if we vote on it tonight, it becomes law, and it's in fully effect. If we table it, that gives us time to uh, consider what you said tonight, sir. If so. I may, Mr. Supervisor. Yep. Um, and if there are um, significant substantive changes that the board is considering, those changes will be published to the public, and then there will be another public hearing so that we can hear um, people's views on that particular version of the law. So, okay, so uh, we will now close the public hearing. I'll take a motion to close it. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this public hearing is now closed. Madam Clerk, can we please open up the next public hearing? Public hearing number three on the matter of amending town code chapter 219 regarding regulation of abandoned vehicles. Okay, motion to open the public hearing. Moved. Okay, get a second. second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this hearing is now open. We do not have anybody currently signed up for this hearing. Is there anybody in the attendance that would like to speak on this? Okay, I'll open it up for discussion. Uh, or, Chief, if you want to 
talk on this real quick? Uh, yes, yeah, this, this is just a way of us uh, uh, trying to codify uh, the chance to use any uh, um, uh, abandoned uh, vehicles uh, that were still in usable shape and be able to use them for uh, obviously like our police purposes, um, uh, undercover vehicles and uh, a way to kind of save taxpayers um, money. And instead of actually buying new vehicles, we can repurpose another one. Okay, thank you. Anyone on the board wish to no, add anything? No, my question was answered by the town attorney, so I'm good. A vehicle is anything with wheels and an engine? Is that what the answer that is was? It's not uh, <laughs> powered by an individual. By yes. an individual, okay. Thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, we will now close the uh, public hearing. Can I have a motion to close? Moved. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Okay, um, this hearing is now closed. Madam Clerk, uh, we will now um, move on to the item for board action for the public hearing. Okay, item number seven, PH-3, amending town code chapter 219, regarding regulation of abandoned vehicles. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, all right, so we've discussed this. Uh, did anybody else have any questions or comments regarding this before we vote? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item, we'll move back to uh, items for board action. Madam Clerk. Okay, item number 17, adopting a resolution authorizing the supervisor to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Monroe County for law enforcement records management software. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, Chief. Uh, yes, this is for the uh, software, um, the mobile uh, reporting software that's used countywide, uh, first adopted by RPD back in uh, 2015. Uh, Monroe County actually uh, bought the same software, so it's in all of our uh, uh, vehicles, it's all in all of our uh, computers, and it's a way that uh, law enforcement across Monroe County can all share the same data. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments regarding this resolution? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 18, returning and then reallocating funding for Department of Public Works awarded projects. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, uh, Commissioner McGee. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This resolution would reallocate funds to, um, during construction of the Amherst Park pump station, we discovered that the forest main uh, needed uh, repair. So this would reallocate funding to align that forest main and uh, finish up that pump station for many years to come. So um, this would be reallocating ARPA funds from a previous sewer project that has been complete and would bring it into the Amherst Park uh, fund. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, so this process is just to be transparent where the money is, where it was, where it's going, and uh, uh, make sure that uh, the public is aware. So um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 19, authorizing the purchase of one tree truck to be used by the Department of Public Works. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, Commissioner McGee. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This resolution would authorize the purchase of a replacement large tree truck within the department. Um, this was a budgeted item within the 2023 budget, and this would allow us to place the order. Uh, currently, they're telling us it's an almost two-year wait time, so uh, we'll keep our tree truck in good form until we can receive this one. Okay, thank you. Anyone have any questions or comments? So I will pass along, Aaron. I did get a text message yesterday with uh, compliments to our tree uh, crew. I think there's been uh, a bunch of trees that have been falling over the last week with uh, the heavy rains and some winds. So um, complimenting your crew on uh, their uh, professionalism and uh, quickness to get to a tree that was blocking a road. So please pass that along. Uh, anyone else, questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 
Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 20, award of bid for Arundaquite Farmers Market. So I'm sorry, uh, legal, has asked, yeah, legal has asked for a roll call, so we will um, do that. So we'll start to the, uh, to the left. So Council Member uh, Freeman? Aye. Okay, Council Member Romeo? Aye. Deputy Supervisor Pertacone? Aye. Council member, uh, or sorry, Supervisor Fitzpatrick is, is uh, aye. And uh, Council member Wiener. Aye. Okay. Okay, that resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 20. Award of bid for Rundaquoid Farmers Market Cold Storage Building Renovation. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. second. Okay, Commissioner McGee. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. So this resolution would award the uh, construction of the rehabilitation of our former uh, cold storage building into a permanent farmer's market out back in the, what we discussed earlier as the backyard project. This would, uh, the, the bids were open last Friday and Javen Construction was the, um, the winner of that bid. Um, so this would fund that, that project um, and Get, hopefully we can get started here within the next few weeks if this is awarded tonight. Okay, thank you. And as uh, Council Member Freeman brought up earlier, the this portion of this project uh, is covered by grants, and uh, hopefully we're able to uh, uh, work out any um, confusion on that and uh, be in reverse for this part of the project. So. And I, and I think moving forward, this is going to be a good utilization of that building. I mean, we all know it's been sitting there for, you know, in the past there's been talk about knocking it down and everything, but I think what was we got together and uh, the lead, the uh, supervisor Fitzpatrick, uh, let's utilize that building and we're going to, and I think it's going to be a good project. Uh, we have another, it's going to be a nice project, and then we can utilize it for farmer's market and other things as well, too. So I'm looking forward to it. And like I said a little while ago, uh, they'll get they'll hit the ground running with this project. There's not a lot to it, but um, we should have it up and up and running in a few months anyway. So I look forward to it. And that's a fairly recently built building, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when I saw plans to tear it down, I was I was shocked. It's I mean, it's less than five, built, five years old, Aaron, is that building? Seven, five, maybe seven to eight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, at, and if you do have a chance to go back there, um, it's it's a really large building. It's it a is massive a large building. It is a massive building, um, and the changes we're going to be making to that will be, uh, I think, the envy of, of yeah. other towns to uh, so, be so. able to have that space for uh, many different opportunities. So, any I other the yep. extent? That I noticed another town building it indoor public market building right now and it's got to be a huge massive expense compared to what we're spending from what the value we have out of that sure yeah i think i you, agree people yeah so i think you're, you're we're under half a million here i think if you were going for a new build it's probably two two million three million dollars with the uh, cost of construction right now so uh huge savings we're able to use that full grant uh with no uh no expense to our uh, taxpayers anyone else Okay, we uh, will move on to vote. So all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 21, declaring certain equipment surplus property. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, Commissioner McGee. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This last resolution would be to surplus uh, uh, the, the attached list, which is a couple of uh, Caterpillar backhoes that um, we, we no longer need because we have our replacements in hand. So this was surplus those equipment. Okay, any question, questions or comments for Commissioner McGee? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this Mr. Sorry. Supervisor, I'm sorry. I don't know yeah. if everyone's speaking into their mics. So okay. We could do another yeah. call okay. okay, absolutely. This time we'll... In all fairness, we'll start to the right this time with Council Member Weiner. Aye. Supervisor Fitzpatrick is at aye. Deputy Supervisor Perticone. Aye. Council Member Romeo. Aye. Council Member Freeman. Aye. Okay. Thank you. We will now move on to the next item. Item number 22, accepting gifts for Arundaquite's classic car cruising. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. 
Okay. Um, Recreation Director uh, Grieve. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this resolution will allow the town to accept gifts in the form of food and food service uh, from a few very generous town residents who have volunteered to purchase, prepare, and serve a picnic lunch this Sunday at our classic car cruising event here at Town Hall. Uh, we will be asking for suggested donation uh, for the meal, uh, and all proceeds from the donations will go directly to the town's United Way campaign. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Very good. So I will do a little shout out to recreation right now. I went to the uh, community center last night for the uh, meet and greet for our um, teen police academy and was uh, pleasantly surprised uh, at the amount of stuff going on up there. So we had a minion party, we had a full turf, uh, we had the IPD, uh, we had a full gym, we had uh, basketball lessons going on, we had uh, um, self-defense courses going on, so um, kudos to you and your staff. Um, the change from a year ago is uh, absolutely amazing, um, and uh, lots still to grow there, but um, um, fa fantastic job up there, so kudos to you and your staff. I was also greeted very friendly, and um, just much much different culture up there so thank you thank you so much so okay all those in favor say aye. aye aye all opposed say nay okay this resolution has been adopted next item item number 23 allocating funding for the town's 2024 fourth of july celebration okay motion to adopt moved oh. can i get a second second okay Shannon. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this resolution will allow us to allocate uh, $40,000 in ARPA funds uh, towards the 2024 July 4th festival in conjunction with our 50th anniversary of the festival. Uh, will allow us to expand our offerings for next year's festival, um, including youth and family oriented activities, uh, more entertainment options, and also expanding the uh, fireworks display. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Actually, I have a question that will be more for um, the Comptroller. Diana, was was funds budgeted for this year's 4th of July ceremony? The 4th of July um, celebration is funded through strictly through sponsorships and donations. The, there's no money in the budget for the July 4th celebration. And did we get adequate funding for that adequate um, response from the sponsors that meet our costs the, the recreation department does an excellent job working within what they are able to um, collect through sponsorships and, and donations and but the additional four forty thousand is for what um, the additional forty thousand yes um our it, funds it would be utilized, as, as Director Greaves said, to expand the celebration yeah. for the so, 50th celebration. Yeah, this is. I, yeah, 50th I just want to make some um, um, one last statement. Um, this is more of a statement than a question. Um, this doesn't sound like any uh, that it will fit any of the um, rec the requirements for the American Rescue Plan, as the, the four areas for which. Um, these funds are um, be able to use for that. There were strict guidelines for that. Under the revenue recovery portion of the American Rescue Fund, um, up to a set dollar amount can be utilized for any government service, and this is a function of the government, the celebration. But it doesn't look like it's incurred because of... Um, the $10, $10 million the, is unrestricted. Correct. Ten, up so, to ten million is yeah, it's just, uh, just so everyone's aware in the public, the ten million dollars uh, portion of our ARPA funding needs zero approval from this board. Uh, it was my determination when taking office to bring it forward to the board, make it transparent uh, for um, our our public, our taxpayers, to see where that money is going, and also to give equal opportunity to to the board members. Um, I think it's important um, to include our board members in these decisions. Um, 
but uh, other towns that have had this have not taken these items to resolution and um, I don't feel that that's right in a transparent manner so um, we are doing this uh, for transparency and uh, to give the board an opportunity to to weigh in on on decisions I, I believe that fan financial decisions made uh, by this town uh, should be made by all elected officials so um, you know that hopefully explains a, a little bit about the ten million dollars but to my yeah, and Bonadio uh, ha has approved this. Um, this is our number one attraction for this town. I think it's a it's a special for opportunity for our town every Fourth of July. Uh, if you grew up here, you know how important Fourth of July is and what it means to be an around a quite resident around Fourth of July to have that. And uh, what better way to celebrate our town, uh, our inclusiveness, and our uh, country? With uh, some added events for our for our residents, that does not uh, affect um, their pocketbooks one bit. So, um, I'm very much looking forward to this 50th year celebration and adding, uh, you know, the additions to it that makes the 50th that much more special. So, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Yep. But Diana, is it possible if you can? Um just send me again what those guidelines were for the opera plan this the questions that i'm asking you is because i want to make sure that when i make my vote i understand what we are doing so can you please send those to me again so i can have them for further use thank you so much and thank you shannon for for doing this this the, yeah, I, this year's celebration was fantastic we set record numbers and um you know again i think it, it speaks for for the rec department, for our town, for our employees, um, and uh, everybody that's uh, a part of this. So, you know, and I, I think 50, 50 years. I don't know if any other town has had fifty years worth of Fourth of July celebrations. Agreed. I doubt it. So, this is something I think the town and, and the residents will be looking forward to. So, I'm in some full support of this, and um, I'll, you know, it'll be it'll be a good. Uh, I'm certainly sure. Shannon, you and your group and your team will do a really good job of, uh, you know, exploiting 50 years worth of uh, Fourth of July celebration. So, and for anyone there, maybe you need more candy this year in the parade. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 24, accepting gifts for Arundel Quite's July 4th celebration. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Shannon? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this resolution will allow the town to accept and acknowledge our very generous uh, donors, sponsors, and volunteers who all contributed uh, to the 2023 July 4th celebration that just took place and uh, show our gratitude to them for their support. Okay, thank you. Anyone have any questions or comments? So obviously a huge uh, thank you to all our sponsors and all our uh, uh, members of our community that make this uh, successful. So um, we can't do it, uh, can't do it alone. So we, appre we appreciate that. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 25, accepting gift of bench from Rotary. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, this is uh, under me, but I'll let Aaron, you've kind of dealt with this the most, so I'll let you uh, explain. Yes, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, this would formally accept a bench from uh, the Arundaquite Rotary International Group. We've had a few conversations with them, and I think we've landed on a good plan on where it's going to go um, out here in the town hall lawn. And uh, so they would they would supply the bench, and we will install it and maintain it from there. Okay, thank you. And just to make sure we are all in agreement on where it's going, the town, the Rotary, and the Post 134? Yes, I believe so. <laughs> nice work. That's not that's not easy. So, all right. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. Yes. 
Sorry, I'm having a hard time here. That's all right. So we will start to my left again. Mm -hmm. Council Member Freeman. Aye. Council Member Romeo. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Pertico. Aye. Supervisor Fitzpatrick is an aye. And Council Member Wainer. Aye. All right, this resolution has been adopted. Next item. Item number 26, approving the special event license for St. Joseph Hotz Ukrainian Catholic Church Annual Ukrainian Festival. Okay, motion to adopt. Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, um, Madam Clerk. Okay, this is an event that has happened for many years. It's a wonderful event. It begins on Thursday, August 17th at noon and runs through Sunday, August 20th until midnight. Um, rides and equipment may be set up on Saturday, August 12th and taken down Monday, August 21st. And um, the approval is conditioned on the uh, uh, condition that they notify all the affected residents in the area. Okay, thank you. Anyone have any questions or comments? All right, so obviously a long-standing uh, tradition here in Irondequoit. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a wonderful job. Food and entertainment is fantastic. Um, one many here in Irondequoit look forward to. So uh, another festival that uh, shines our uh, inclusiveness here in town. So um, anyone else? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this resolution has been adopted. That is uh, our last item on the menu. Chief, I'd like to complain about a barking dog. I don't know if anybody <laughs> else can hear it, but yeah. I think one of our, uh, yeah, one of our right. captive friends is uh, not happy with his accommodations. So, all right, with that, we will, uh, this concludes our regular meeting of July 18th, 2023. Our next uh, meeting is a workshop meeting, Tuesday, August 8th, 2023 at 4 p.m. here in the Braddock Room. Our next regular meeting is Tuesday, August 15th at 7 p.m. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Moved. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>